Greetings, MathGuy.com here. Uh, my name is Mark Karadimos, and uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the point-slope formula. Here you'll notice that I have the point-slope formula already drawn, and uh, there's just a couple things that I guess I'd like to point out to you, is that there are some subscripts. Let's see that value of 1? That value of 1 placed on that letter indicates that this x uh, variable is special. It's a little bit different than this x over here to its left. Here we have a, another y subscript here, y. This y uh, variable is therefore different than the y next to it, to its left. Uh, also, we have a letter here of m. Traditionally, when we refer to slope, we use the letter m to designate it. So that is slope. All right, so why do they call it the point-slope formula? Because if you have a point and you have a slope, this formula can use those two pieces of information to create an equation, and this would be the equation of a line, uh, and that line will basically tell us the line that has both that point and that slope. All right, so the point-slope formula does something very specific. It helps us create equations of lines. All right, well, for this problem, we're going to be given some information. Uh, all right, so for the purposes of this problem here today, we're going to be given two points. So point one is going to be negative 4, negative 7, and point two is going to be 12, 1. All right, um, you know, we call this x, we call this y, we call this x, we call this y, because these are points. In ordered pairs have x values, they have y values. Now to separate these so that we could tell that there is definitely a difference, we're going to have to call one of these points point 1, and the other one we're going to call point 2. It doesn't matter which one point 1 is, point 2 is, but just be... Um, you know, make sure that if you use a 1 here, that's x1, then this has to be y1. If this is x2, then this has to be y2. Now, this formula is called the point-slope formula. It needs a point. It needs a slope. Yes, we have points, tons of points. Well, it's two points. We need a slope. We're missing a slope. So the first thing we're going to have to do is calculate the slope, and that's going to require another formula. So the slope is called rise over run, and the formula for that would be y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So that's how you calculate slope, using that formula. So now that we've labeled all these values, we could plug them in. So uh, we know, let's see, y2, hmm, y2 we know is 1. So I'm going to put a 1 over there. I know y1 is negative 7. I know that x2 is, hmm, let's see over there, that's 12. I know that x1, looking over there to the left, is going to be negative 4. So I know I'm going to be plugging in these values, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to be plugging in that value there, all these values in there. So I'm plugging in these values into this formula, and then what I do is land, I land up playing cleanup. All right, and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to plug them in. So, all right, so I'm going to put 1 and negative 7 into the numerator. I know I'm going to put 12 and negative 4 into the denominator. But you'll also notice, and this is very important, that this formula already has two minus signs. We're subtracting some values there. So that's going to have to follow us into this formula. So we're going to have to put a minus sign there. And likewise, that subtraction sign is going to follow us right there as well. So we've got to be careful with that. It's a big place for people to make mistakes with these minus signs. All right, so mathematically, I better put parentheses around the second pair uh, because I have a couple subtraction signs and negatives right next to each other. All right, but if you know anything about mathematics, you also know that when there are two negatives next to each other, whether they're positives, negatives, subtraction signs, those two make a positive. 
because the opposite of a negative 7 is a positive 7. And that's what I really have here. I'm taking the opposite of negative 7. So those two make plus signs, just like these do here also. All right, so continuing the cleanup, we could see that, what is our slope? It's going to be 1 plus 7 all over 12 plus 4. All right, so that looks like it's going to be 8 over 16. All right, and we know that 8 over 16 is equal to a half. All right, if you just reduce that, uh, I did this in my head, but I guess I should be a little bit more thorough, and I should show you that I'm dividing the numerator by 8. I'm dividing the denominator by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So that, right, that's a little reminder how to reduce fractions. All right, so... Great. The point-slope formula says if I've got a slope and I've got a point, I can start using the formula. Well, all right. Well, I've got a slope, and I've got my slope right over here, and I have a point. Now I have a, a choice. I can decide to use either one of these points. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which point I use, but I'm going to have to use one of these points along with the slope that I had calculated over here. All right, so what people usually do is they try to use the values that are easiest to use. I don't know. I see some negatives here, and I plug them in. I don't know. That, that, that could be confusing for someone. So well, I'm going to try to use this value. Okay, so I'm going to try to use that value. I think it might be easier uh, to you know, use, and I think they'll be less complicated when I throw that in the formula. All right, so I'm going to write down the formula again. Remember the point-slope formula looks like this. All right, so I'm going to plug in some information. Well, we already know that the slope is a half. And I know I'm using the value 12 is our x2. Yeah, you know, that is our x value. Boy, and that's a confusing part. Just noticing that when I had decided to choose x2 and y2, the formula here doesn't have an x2 and y2. But, you know, this is the value we're going to use for our x substituted value. So I know it does say x2, but I am going to be placing in the 12 here. And here it says the y1 value. Yeah, I know. We're not using y1. We're using y2. We're putting in 1 here. And I know that could be a little confusing for people. You know, we, we could have done this problem, and instead we could put in for x1, we could put in negative 4, and we could put in negative 7 for our y1. Maybe we should do that next to see if it comes out to be the same answer. Or maybe just maybe we can do this alongside each other and see how this would have looked if I did put that value in there. If I put those values in instead of the values for x2, y2. In other words, you know, normally you only do this problem once. I don't do it twice like I am doing it here. But uh, just to show you that it doesn't matter which of these values you use, like if I had used the negative 7 over here, and let's see, for x1, I used negative 4. See here, here, this is the complicated part. See the double negatives? We've got, you know, I had to bring down that negative. I have to bring down that negative, which is like a subtraction sign, really. But when I substituted in the negative 7 and the negative 4, I got double negatives. See, that's what I was trying to avoid earlier. Well, in the land of math, we know that if you have double negatives, those double negatives cancel. So they're going to cancel anyway, whether you use the, the easy numbers 12 and 1 or these weird, wacky negatives. All right, well, going back to this problem, and I know I'm flip-flopping between them, but uh, I'm going to do the distributive property. I'm going to multiply both of these sections by a half. Half of x, half x. Uh, let's see. 
half of 12, that's a 6. And I got a minus sign in the middle. Hmm. Uh, let's see over here. This is y plus 7, isn't it? Uh, I want to multiply a half times all these numbers. So a half times x is half x. Uh, let's see, a half of 4. Well, half of 4 is 2. Hmm. Okay, I know you're looking at this thing. How are these two possibly going to be the same? Uh, yeah, a big revelation coming up here in a moment. But let's see, we're subtracting 1. So the opposite of subtracting 1 is adding 1. So if I add 1 to both sides, let's see, I get y equals the negative 1 and the 1 cancel. I get half x. Eh, let's see, negative 6 plus 1. Well, that's going to be a negative 5. All right, well, let's look over here. Uh, get rid of adding 7. Well, that would be subtracting 7 from both sides. So let's see, what am I going to get here? I'm going to get y equals, see the 7 and the negative 7 cancel. I'm going to get 1 half x. Hmm, let's see, 2 and negative 7 is minus 5. Oh, you see that no matter which way I would have done this problem, whether I had cho chosen the 12, 1, like I did, or if I had chosen this, which I did over here for the second part, it doesn't matter which of those two points you had, you know, you, you could have chosen. And you know, it doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to get the same exact answer. And that would be this one over here. Or you're going to get this one over here. It's the same answer, obviously. All right, so that's it. So we use the point slope formula, given two points. And now we have the equation of a line. Great.